Hi friends, I thought that I would start the new year sitting down and sharing with you about our accident that happened right before Christmas. I don't know, um, but there's this heavy feeling in my heart that I need to share our story because it's been called a Christmas miracle or our local Christmas miracle and um, with who we had the accident with which ties down to my plans for 2023 and it's probably not gonna make a lot of sense in the beginning but if you stick with me you will probably can see how it all kind of comes together in the end and I hope that it touches somebody's heart and that it's maybe struggling or somebody that is struggling with their faith and um, maybe somebody like me who's been going through a lot um, in this past year and then it comes the end of the year and you're like and now this. So, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. I don't see that yet. Um, I can see how it relates the person who hit us, where we were, what was happening the week before. It's it's kind of a personal experience, but I hope. That what I share with you today um, helps you in some way and uh, I can only share what God did to me and what the way that he was there for me and I feel like my responsibility is to share it but in the end um, it's it's the Holy Spirit that will speak to your heart and will make sense in your heart and something will spark a little flame in you and probably has nothing to do with what happened to us. Now let me start this video by saying that I'm going to kind of tell you what was happening right before the accident. I was reading Matthew and I was really studying Matthew and uh, God was speaking to my heart in what to do and uh, sometimes I feel like I don't have much to offer to people that is in need I don't I don't have the means to donate money or you know do things that maybe other people do but God was speaking to my heart and telling me that I needed to be there for somebody that was in need. And my plans and uh, part of the video that I had planned for that day, that Thursday where we had the accident, was to share with you my plans for the garden 2023, which you're probably thinking how is that well my plan was to donate 40 percent of everything that i would be able to grow to our local place for the homeless um i have a very good friend and um, somebody that goes to church with me who is the director of a big um non-profit in the Bay Area in Oregon and I you know talked to her and said listen I want to do something I know what I can do is not much but if what I grow you know as far as protein as far as vegetables as far as you know what God lets me what God helps me grow then that's what I'm gonna share and uh, she said, we could totally use it. We're feeding 
this many people every day, we need this many pounds of protein per day, we need this, you know, m many pounds of vegetables, and, um, and really that was very heavy in my heart uh, to not only grow my garden, not only grow our own protein, raise our own protein, but also share it. And um, I was very excited about it. That was a few weeks, like a week before the accident happened. I was making all the plans, ordering my seeds, and then my husband lo loses his job that Friday, which was December the 9th. Um, he wasn't uh, fired, but he, ha he, he felt like he had to quit because something happened in his job, and um, we just don't want to get into it, but uh, it just he felt like that was the right thing to do and um, we were okay with that because he's able to find a job somewhere else he's a welder there's plenty of jobs and um, that was gonna be okay now fast forward to December the 15th we had our last meeting before our Christmas program in our community I went there I sold most of my Christmas baskets. I made uh, soaps with the goat's milk. Um, I sold several individual soaps. Um, I had some people coming over. I, I basically got all my Christmas money pretty much that day. Um, so I come home, I tell my husband, it's been such a wonderful day, what a blessing. You know, let's let's go and um, let's go get groceries. Since we had to go pick up our son after basketball practice, but eventually, sometimes on the weekends, we do DoorDash in the very busy Bay Area, and that was kind of an afterthought. We're like, let's go and work maybe an hour, do some grocery shopping, be back by six thirty to pick up my son and uh, go home. So we leave the house in the car and we were heading to the Bay Area. We work and by the time we were going to log out because we had to go pick up our son at basketball, he messages me and says, I'm gonna be at a friend's house. If you guys wanna stay a little bit longer and make more money, you should. So we were like, perfect, because they they kind of gave us the slot until 7.30 p.m. So we thought, we'll work until 7.30, and then we'll go to Walmart, pick up the stuff that I needed, that it was dog food and some other things, and then we'll go pick up my son at his friend's house, and then we'll go home. Now, because of the distance from the Bay Area to where my son was, and from you know, where my son was to our house, it would have been about an hour from where we were to our home. Maybe a little bit more since it's dark and it, we have deer and, you know, dark roads. And so we stayed until 7.30, we get out, go to Walmart, buy our stuff, my daughter buys food because we didn't have dinner. We get on the car and we're heading home. We were on 101, which is the you know highway that is near the coast, um, and um, we were just driving just fine. It was 7:50 or so in the evening, and it wasn't raining. It wasn't foggy. It wasn't cold, I mean, a little, but not too much. And um, we had 101 for ourselves. We didn't have a car in front of us. We didn't have a car behind us. You know, 101 in California is busy. 101 in this area of Oregon, not so much. So I looked down to my phone and I sent a message to my son. I was in the passenger side of the car. And then my husband was in the driver's side of the car. My daughter was right behind him. 
We also had our puppy Hope and she was sitting right behind me but she was on the ground because she was being annoying with my daughter eating her hamburger. So she was sitting right behind me on the floor. I look down to my phone and I text my son and I say, we're on our way. We should be there, I don't know if I said 30 minutes, at your friend's place. Now at his friend's place, it's an area where there's no cell service. So I kind of knew that I needed to send the message right then. Excuse me. And um, so I send the message, I'm looking down into my phone and then all of a sudden I see a bright light in front of my eyes. And you know, I've never been confused like this in my entire life. I don't know how to explain it. But I am now joking that when I see things happen on TV and you're like, get up, why are you on the floor? I mean, run. Something traumatic happened and the person cannot move. That was me. Um, so I see this light and I hear my seatbelt click. It goes click click twice. And then I start feeling this enormous pressure in my chest like I had a boulder that it was laying on my chest on this side so of course you know your left side it, it, I never thought it was like a heart attack or something like that but I could only breathe very like I couldn't take deep breaths and so all of this I don't know what is happening okay I'm telling you what I felt at that moment so all of a sudden, our car turns, we were driving south, and our car turns, and it's facing north, so we're, we're heading the wrong direction, and there's this car that hit us on the back door, it, and the, the window explodes, and our dog, Hope, kind of, I don't know if she jumps, or if the... the you know it kind of threw her out and then I thought is this an accident you know I couldn't see any other car all I could see was the the series of hits and the noise and the glass and at that moment I was so confused I couldn't think of about anybody like I forgot my husband was driving, I forgot my daughter was behind him. I just thought to myself, what? I just, I couldn't think. Um, so at that point the car stops and the only thing that I saw was Hope jumping out or flying out the window. So I started calling her, Hope, 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 Hope. And she just is so confused and she's caught and she's scared and so she starts running it's pitch dark I'm thinking somebody's gonna hit her all of this <laughs> I j I'm telling you what what was happening so my husband gets out of the car and stumbling and confused and talking nonsense he goes around the car and opens my door somebody hands hope to him and I grab her by the collar and I tried to I tried to comfort hope but at the same time I couldn't move like I could move my hand but I couldn't move my legs I couldn't move my chest it was like I was pinned to the to the seat so I grab hope and then like a few seconds later somebody comes and says let me take her let me take hope I will keep her for tonight I live across the street as soon as you're done with your hospital and your things you can come and pick her up and I remember crying and saying to you know just please take good care of her um, you know I'll pay for the night I don't know I was just making no sense and um, so she takes hope 
and I finally started to realize that we were in an accident. Um, my husband kind of sits on the ground, he's confused. My daughter, at that moment, she starts crying and saying that her shoulder, her shoulder, her shoulder. Um, so at that moment, which was probably a few seconds, um, I try to find my phone, I can't find my phone. I find my husband's phone, call 911, they said, we know about the accident, we're on our way. So I sit there, still cannot move. I can't move my neck, I can't move my chest, I can only move this arm a little bit, but this other one, I couldn't feel it. And I look back, I try to talk to my daughter, she's telling me, Mom, I just, I cannot bear the pain in my shoulder. It's, and she's crying, and my daughter, she is doing college 10 hours away from us, she came for the holidays, um, she got here I think on the 9th, and then this happened on the 15th, um, so I, you know, with all the confusion, I, that's when I realized, oh my gosh, my daughter is there. Then all of a sudden, this um, person comes out of a car and says he's an off-duty paramedic and that he, if he's okay, if he checks um, the one that's feeling the worst. And, you know, we, my husband and I said, go check my daughter, you know, Allie, and she, he did everything, evaluation and everything, and um, was really a lot of help to her and helped stabilize her as the ambulance was arriving. Um, then the firefighters came and I'm sure it was an EMS or, you know, somebody that started to treat me and then started to treat my husband. So at that point, they tell us that it's been a busy night and that the ambulance, <laughs> well, they needed to we're not coming for a few minutes so try to help us as much as they can over there and everyone is coming and looking at us in disbelief that we were alive um you know if you live in a big city you're probably thinking that that's how things work everywhere but once you move to a smaller place there's not many ambulances, there's not many um, first responders, there's not, there's a lot of things that really are completely different and um, you know, maybe makes you feel not as safe as if something happened in a big city and help is just seconds away. But eventually the ambulance comes and takes us. Um, we were probably a few minutes from the hospital, but it felt like we were there for, I don't know, 30 minutes. Every bump, every movement, every... It was like so painful and um, at this point my entire body kind of was... I assume it was coming out of the the initial shock so everything started hurting my back my ribs my neck as before it was just numb now I was starting to feel all the pain my clavicle on this side no it's it's better but um it was all swollen and it was purple and um it was just you know my body was starting to react and um, we get to the hospital where, where everyone is like there's a line of doctors and nurses waiting by each of our rooms I go into one room my husband is next door to mine then my daughter is a few rooms down the hall and um, of course over there they're trying to assess is there a puncture lung is you know is there internal bleeding is there you know the 
impact and I'll tell you what happened because right now I'm telling you what I know at that point but um, the impact the hit that we took was at a high speed and it was somebody that either got their foot stuck in the gas uh, or there's like different possibilities and I'll explain that to you later but um, because of how much speed the driver was coming at us that we were just going um, we were in an intersection going on green um, the engine and everything took most of the impact on my side the passenger side and you can see the engine it's all like sunken into the inside really of the car it's like if it did that to metal um, doctors were thinking you know there must be something really wrong with these people this is just too hard of a hit and after you know they cut our clothes they they take us for scans and all of that um, they, my husband and I were released I think it was at 3 a.m. that same night because we had we we had no broken bones we had no internal bleeding we had no puncture lungs and really the pain that we were in was the best case scenario the airbag that deployed that hit us at that high speed, the seat belt that held us so we wouldn't hit our faces against, you know, the the airbag or dashboard, whatever the case may be in different situations. But because of of those safety devices, we were still in a lot of pain because I mean we took a big hit that um, really could have been a lot worse but at that point I before they they discharged my husband they were doing still some more tests I end up in um, uh, disposable I don't know like scrubs <laughs> and I started dragging myself down the hall to go and check on my daughter because nobody would tell me anything about her and I was just so scared I go see her I find her in pain so I drag myself to the nurse station and say you need to give her something for the pain at that point I had morphine so I still in a lot of pain but I knew how bad it was before I got my medicine so I go with the nurse, drag myself to my daughter's room again, um, make sure she, I'm there, making sure she's getting her pain medicine, and then I go back to my room, and that's when I realize I didn't know where my room was, and uh, all of a sudden I was all confused again, and didn't know where I was. But then this nurse came, it's probably 23, 24, he comes and says, well, let me take you to your room, grabs me by the arm, and helps me to my room, uh, where, you know, my husband was next door, I sat with him until he was discharged, and then with all this pain, with all this I cannot describe the pain to you. I cannot. It's one of the worst. I've had three kids with no anesthesia. I can tell you what pain feels like. And um, this was much, much worse. It was such an incredible overall non-stopping pain that it was driving me completely insane. I could not sleep. I could not sit. I could not lay down. I could not stay still. I could not move. It was... 
it was one of those things that they feel not real. I felt like I was in a nightmare. It was another nightmare and I just, this was a painful one. And uh, eventually we stayed with my daughter until 4 a.m. And they tell us that she does have fractured collarbone, a fractured breastbone, which is incredibly painful. Um, a broken bone in her back, but apparently at that point no surgery was needed. And um, but that they needed to keep her because her liver was bleeding, and uh, it was just a little bit. But the good thing about the liver is that it does heal itself. So they were gonna give it, uh, you know, 24 hours to make sure that her liver wasn't bleeding anymore, and so. At this point, we were both naked, my husband and I, we had no clothes. We were in this, like, paper-thin scrubs, basically walking around, and um, it's just, I had no shoes, I lost my shoes, and so I called, we have no family here, so I called our pastor's home and you know I, I asked him can, can somebody come and get us um, we needed to get clothes take a shower go to the pharmacy pick up our medicine um, to just go back to the hospital and stay with my daughter and so we did uh, we came home, not home, we went to a friend's home who has a little casita and so we stayed in that casita where we had the bathroom, we could have you know, warm water running down our backs and took medicine, slept for a couple of hours and then I don't know with what strength we woke up, took all the non-drowsy, non narcotic medicine that we needed so we could drive back and uh, be with our daughter so we went back her liver stopped bleeding almost immediately but they still kept her until that afternoon I think at 5 p.m. she was released and we went back but to my friend's house who really was such an angel um, the entire community, you know, they were not only very worried, but they would bring meals and, you know, Christmas cookies and candies for the kids and just the calls and, you know, the carrying, um, the cards, the gifts, you know, at that point, it, everything hurt so bad that sometimes I'd have to have my friend put some pills in my mouth, drink it as, as best as I could, and wait until the ibuprofen would do something so I could move. I cannot describe the amount of pain we were in at that point. But I can tell you that it was such a nightmare. The next day when we went to pick up our daughter, we had to stop by the tow yard where the car was. We had the dog food, we had other things, and I don't know with what strength my husband got everything out. And the guy at the tow yard said, I can't believe you're walking. He just could not believe my husband was walking. He said, when I picked up that car, we were sure that nobody survived this accident. Nobody survives this kind of accident. And I, my husband turned around and, you know, kind of thought to himself, this is crazy, you know? But these are people that do this for a living and, you know, they see cars that are 
total than accidents and I guess they're used to seeing different outcomes and you know the people at the tow yard look at us like are these people zombies or that when we went to the hospital that was another thing to pick up my daughter you know I was grabbing myself onto the walls to kind of walk towards the room and I and people would look at me and say were you in the accident and I'm like yeah <laughs> and I'm like there's no way and I'm like, well, look, trust me there's a way I was there and it just you know the doctors you know there was this doctor that came to me and said you know you must be a uh, I can't remember the sad words, but he said something like, you must be a really lucky lady because if this guy would have hit you on the door as it should have happened because of the speed and the way that he hit you, um, you would have died on impact. So I guess this is your second chance or something like that. I remember looking at him and I said, well, if there's anything, I feel like I'm the unluckiest person in the world, but Jesus seems to love me and wants to keep me here, you know? And um, he kind of chuckled like, do you think this is a blessing, <laughs> feeling this way? But I think being alive is a blessing. And so despite all the pain and despite everything that we had to go through, and of course the bigger impact it was absorbed by my body because this is what happened we were driving 101 south this guy was coming from the right so passenger side and he um, was traveling east so here we are there's a light it's green there's no cars in front of us there's no cars behind us we're going down in through the intersection and this in the Bay Area, there's a lot of like really, I don't know how to call them, like they're steep roads, um, very steep roads where to the point that you feel like you're going like this. Well, this guy, we were driving this way and he was coming down like this from the top of the hill. So he not only was coming full speed, but also with gravity, he was just going down. And he was, instead of hitting my door, he hit, let's say that this is, let's say that this is my door and this is the engine part, he hit the engine. Because when my husband saw something white, like, you know, with, with your, what is it, your peripheral? Thing, he saw something move and he hit the brakes as far as he as as hard as he could so if we would have continued to go the speed then he would have hit my door but because of my husband hit the brakes the guy was only able to hit full speed the engine part and on the passenger so I'm sitting here on the passenger he hits there and then we we kind of flip with him and he comes to the back hits the back door right behind me that's where hope ended up jumping and um, that's pretty much all it happens <laughs> now later on i find out through the lady that took hope we picked her up the next day we were devastated that hope wasn't with us and she's a lot of work but she's also very uh, much attached to us and I know she was going to be sad by herself, so we figured that out. We picked her up at the time that my daughter was released. And um, she told us that this person that hit us, which the police already told me, had no insurance. He had no driver's license. And guess what? He was homeless. The car was in somebody else's name. He purchased that car two days before he hit us. So he didn't even transfer the title in his name. 
and um, even if he would have hit us later he probably would never be able to put insurance on a car uh, unless somebody else was going to add it to their policy because he had no insurance so. the other driver that the homeless person um, he also continued to go with his vehicle towards a pole he hit a pole after he hit for the second time he hit our car and he was ejected from the car because he had no seat belt now I don't know how but he got up and started talking and saying first he said that his brakes were stuck and he couldn't you know stop the car and then he said that the, the the gas got stuck and that's why he was coming in such a high speed toward us I don't know my insurance is still um, investigating my insurance because we didn't have full coverage but we did have the uninsured motorist coverage and so they're still investigating and trying to figure out if in fact he is the person that he says he is if he in fact has no insurance and um, you know what we think we know at this point there's a lot of emotions that come out of an accident when somebody else is hitting you when it's hitting your family when it's hitting your car and just the thought that they they won't be responsible at least for the damages that they cause for some people is um, a really hard to understand concept and um, it brings a lot of emotions and I know he had three different citations that he should have gone to jail but I don't know if he is or not I also know that his birthday was the Sunday after the accident which is, it's dumb but I'm pretty sure he did have uh, some kind of a driver's license but it was probably suspended for something uh, they were able to find him on a registry, but just his insurance, his insurance, his driver's license was probably suspended, which means you don't have a driver's license. The state of Oregon is one of the strictest as far as insurance. Um, you are caught without insurance, you lose your license. Um, there are some states that will give you fines and, you know, second and third chances, but you know, I know a lot of people that are struggling with money and not able to do it and, you know, I'm not here to say anything about that, but just to mention how the odds were all against us. You know, I was talking to somebody about how lucky I was feeling lucky, how blessed. I was feeling that God gave me a second chance, maybe a third chance after I got sick. But um, this person told me, well, maybe God could have spared you, you know? You could have gone five minutes earlier and not find that guy. You could have gone ten minutes later and, you know, he would have missed because nobody was coming right behind you he probably would have hurt himself if he wasn't able to control the car but he wasn't going to hit anybody how can you be thankful of being in so much pain how can you be thankful for not having not being able to work how can you be thankful for your husband not being able to work for over a month And the answer to that question is, if you read the Bible, you know. 
God never promised us to pick, pick us up and, you know, keep us from trouble, but to go through with us. And uh, I know deep in my heart that that was our Christmas miracle. As you're going through the pain and as you're going through uh, the mental pain that comes with it, the horrible nightmares where I could only hear my seatbelt clicking, the light exploding, the, the chest pain. You know, it's still not enough. It's still not enough to blame it on God and it's still not enough to blame it on a homeless person. You know, you know, sometimes I feel like the enemy is trying to discourage us to do what we are meant to do in this world. And uh, when we're trying to get into a path that will ultimately complete what we came to do. And in this case, God had put in my heart to help the people that needed the most. And with what I have, with the knowledge that I have as far as growing food and if that's all I can do and if that's what God wants me to do then by all means I feel like there's a strong calling in my life to always try to be there for somebody else and there's no better way to be there for somebody in need than to provide food, to provide a warm meal, and I may not be the one preparing that meal, but I can help those that do. And you know, there's a lot of a lot of hate towards the homeless, a lot of blame for the drugs and alcohol and lifestyle that they live, but. Not everyone is in that same bag, and not everyone is doing it because of that. I know a lot of veterans and a lot of people with mental illness that that's the only way they know how to live. And, you know, the enemy is smart. And I'll try to discourage us to do what God set in our hearts to do. And that's why I found it so incredibly full circle that there's no place in my heart to hate this person that did this to us. Um, you know, we are left with not only a lot of physical pain, but a lot of emotional. My daughter is in a full scholarship that depends on how she performs playing soccer. And at this point, she can't run. She's going to have a really long process of healing because of her fractures. And there's a lot of reason why I could really hate this person and I can blame it on the homeless community that are not following the rules or just because they're drug addicts or just and that will lead me nowhere And to be honest, if that's not God working in my heart, I don't know what it is. I 
I don't, I don't know what it is. Because normal me would have resented this person. Normal me would have blamed this person. And yet God put in my heart this warm feeling of I'm there for you, I got you. I do believe that there are a lot of things we can avoid by trying to do things right. But I also feel like there are some things that we're destined to go through and I am sure that even if I left at 6 as I planned to do that Thursday, this guy would have gone through at 6. It was meant to happen to us, but it's just that knowing that we were not alone as this was happened to us that strengthened my faith. And despite everything looking bad right now, despite, you know, our lives being from this couch to that bed, from that bed to this couch I know after so many weeks of taking pain medicine my stomach is completely destroyed I have no desired desire of eating I'm nauseous all the time you know not being able to work not me, not my husband. Um, you know, the financial responsibilities. And the thought that, you know, my insurance may not be able to cover all the expenses that we had in the hospital. You know, those are all heavy burdens that somehow they're not affecting me right now. My heart is so thankful for being alive and my heart is so full of this warmth and that despite our physical life being so messed up right now I I still can count my blessings and I guess that's what I want to share with you. I was talking to somebody yesterday and coming back to, you know, some things we can't escape in our lives and some are part of our destiny and you know, some people go through cancer, some people lose their child like my aunt did and you know, we all go through different things and whatever it is that you're going through right now You don't have to do it alone. You don't have to. So I hope that my story, my Christmas miracle was something that could help somebody out there because I could have been a lot better but I am so thankful I have God in my life and that he won't let me feel those feelings. Uh, people worry about us, like people in our community, they come and check on us and, you know, and I'm like, well, they're worried, but I don't know why it hasn't hit us just yet. And I think it's just the grace of God that is basically keeping it all together. So starting the new year, it's all about second chances, third chances. I guess I'm not done yet in this world and what I came here to do, clearly it's not over. And so, I get some borrowed time, um, 
and I'm I'm happy that what happened to me despite how horrible it was is having people talk all around and calling what happened to us a Christmas miracle even the people that don't believe in miracles so if my story touched somebody out there and now is able to see this as a miracle and if they can feel that it can happen to them too that God cares then I guess all this pain and all this heartache served a purpose, a bigger purpose <laughs> and yeah so here is to a 2023 much better than 2022 uh, with a lot of goals and um, a lot of new projects, a lot of new things that we, I want to get done. Uh, I feel like I, you know, my bucket list continues to grow and grow and grow and grow. But thankfully it's all with, you know, more selfless things and not so selfish things. So thank you to everyone who's been messaging me, leaving comments, supporting Carmen, Susie, uh, Shirley. I just cannot thank you guys enough for caring and for your kind words and your prayers. And I hope that you stay with us. Join me. I will figure it out what this third chance is all about but we're gonna make it count that's for sure <laughs>